great to meet you, John. It's a real pleasure. Um, and uh, I have a number of questions okay. about blockchain, about security. Right. I would be interested to know your views about that. So there are great expectations about blockchain technology, what it can do. People believe that it's salvation for privacy to help us to protect our identities as well as fraud. It started very libertarian a long time ago, but now we can see that large corporations and governments are looking to this technology as well. So what is it? Is it a salvation? <laughs> I don't think I don't think the human race can get salvation from anything external. I, I think the problem with um, not not just the blockchain, because with all technology is that uh, we 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 put it sometimes to inappropriate uses, and I'm hoping with the blockchain we don't do that. Um, you know, the uh, the blockchain can can do miracles. I mean, it's a it's a, a very profound and very strong mathematical formula uh, that allows for secure transactions, um, and it allows for secure. Uh, auditing of those transactions. Uh, once a transaction has been done, it's virtually impossible to unwind it. So uh, that's tremendous power. Um, it also, in, in both corporations and in governments, uh, allows for uh, absolute knowledge of the source and um, the um, the end receive of, of any, any transmission, which will make it much more difficult for hackers to get into our systems. Um, but it's already being misused by um, people taking advantage of uh, unsuspect, unsuspecting end users. For example, wallets in, in Bitcoin, and Ethereum, uh, Monero, um, are completely insecure. They run on smartphones, they run on mobile devices, they run on so uh, personal computers. You as the expert on security believe that we should rely on a software or it's also hardware which is still important but maybe forgotten during those days? Yes, I think hardware has been forgotten and there is simply no way to make the blockchain secure without having hardware as a component, like hardware wallets. And even then they have to be designed uh, very carefully. The seed keys, for example, which are displayed uh, when you first load your wallet, it tells you a bunch of seed keys, you know, various from 12 to 20 or more, depending upon the wallet, depending upon the system. And the, um, uh, the problem with that is that when they display them on your smartphone or your mobile device or your laptop or your desktop, if you have um, screen capture uh, programs, then whoever's watching knows those seed keys. Uh, or sometimes they display the seed keys and ask you to type them in again, which, which is ridiculous. It gives another avenue for hackers using keystroke loggers um, to watch you type them in. So the hardware device has to be small enough so that you can't add applications to it uh, to, um, uh, for hackers to, to, to hack into the hardware device. And it also has to have its own display so that the hardware device, separate from your, your, your mainstream computer, can um, display the seed keys so that no one can see them except yourself or someone looking over your shoulder. Okay, there's always that threat. Um, and, and yet people are just buying into this and, and people are losing lots of money already. And, there's no, and we don't hear about it because who do you report it to? You know, when someone hacks your wallet and steals your, steals your bitcoins, it's not like calling the bank and saying, hey, someone into my bank account, give me my money back. No, um, there's no one to go to, so we don't hear about this. Things that you just said are quite complex to understand for an um, average person. Do you believe that people have to learn more and understand technology a bit more than they used to in the past in order to protect themselves, protect their identity in the future? Or is it will be only open to the tax savvy guys who just kind of... No, no, I hope that's not the case. I hope it will not be restricted. I think um, it's way too complex now for the average user. I mean, for the average housewife or um, you know, plumber that doesn't know much about technology, it's almost impossible to get into blockchain technology, bitcoins, or, or any other uh, cryptocurrency. Um, but that's because we haven't built the facilities for them. 
Uh, right now, it's a brand new field and people are scrambling to come up with the next product or the next idea, totally forgetting security. When people begin to lose their money, then it will become very important. But those systems, technology, Bitcoin technology, been developed by those who are very technically advanced, yes. I would call it. Yes, and so, so it's yeah. sufficient for them yes. and sufficient for their friends, yes. but they're not thinking about someone who does not have that technical knowledge. And, and that has to change. So do you believe we need a multi-stakeholder approach when we design new computer systems? So people not only who are programming, but maybe from business, lawyers, and yes. sociologists kind of... Absolutely. And, and not, not bus just business and lawyers, average people. I mean, yes. they, they need to all be involved. So that, um, because we all know how to do it, it's just that no one's putting any attention into it because, well, we all know what we're doing, so why bother? But that's why I think Bitcoin is restricted to less than half a million users. Do you believe that there can be a time where it will be too late, so we have to do it right now rather than later? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the human condition is you, you want to wait until a catastrophe happens and go, oh, well, now I have to do something. But, but in this modern age of hacking and the ubiquitous use of, of, of mobile devices, we can't wait. We have to do it now. Because if we don't, when the big hack comes, it will affect all of us in a big way. Sure. Do you believe that blockchain technology can actually undermine the status quo that we have now? Or it will be still abused in a way by large corporations? So nothing will change in terms of economy, the way we distribute <laughs> our money? Well, something will definitely change. I mean, something will definitely change. I mean, governments will have to scramble to find a different way to tax people, number one, if, if you can't. If you, if you don't know who has what and who you know, gave their, their bitcoins to who, yes. it's very difficult to trace that and tax that. And that's got to be scaring governments. So I, I predict that governments will step in and try to control it or even stop it in some countries. Um, but they won't be able to. I mean, it's like um, someone inventing the automobile and governments don't like that. So we're going to, what, what happened? I'm sorry. Uh, you know, once the a technology is out of the box, you can't put it back in. So at the moment we have identity based on our nationality and our passport. Do you believe that in the future, maybe with the help of blockchain, maybe some other technology, we'll have different identities and the world will function in a slightly different way in terms of the who you are? Well, I mean, ever since 50,000 years ago when the first uh, Homo sapiens, you know, came, came onto the face of the earth, um, there were hundreds of thousands of tribes scattered all over. And this, was the, this was the governmental unit. Uh, and as we became smarter and, and needed to cooperate more, they began to coalesce into uh, regions and finally nation states. Um, I, I think at some point we will all be just world citizens. Um, it'll, it will be chaotic and painful for some. We'll have to speak a common language. Uh, doesn't mean we have to have a common culture. Um, but language is one of the big differentiators. You know, if you do not understand what another person is saying, then you cannot possibly understand their point of view, their attitudes, their beliefs, or anything else. So, so that will have to happen first. And I, I think it will. I don't care what language it is. Chinese, maybe there's more to, yes. more people speak Chinese than anything else. Although it's a difficult language to learn. For some people who are young and programmers, software engineers, for you, you like a god of software engineering of security in a certain way. So, what would you recommend to those people? You had quite a wonderful life, and as I've seen today, you still enjoy your life. I do. Um, what would you give us an advice to young people who may be working in IT in terms of how they should approach their profession, how they should live their lives? Well, I, I can't tell anybody how to live their life, but, but in terms of approaching their profession, do what you love. You know, if, if you love data, uh, data analysis, then do that. If you love security, do that. But do what your heart is drawn to, not your mind, because your mind will always get you in trouble. Um, you might say, well, you know, if I do this, I'll get more money, uh, it's easier to get a job. Screw that. No. Um, do what your heart tells you. Because if you do that, you'll be really, really good at what you do. And then people will recognize that, and you'll be successful anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.